My name is Onyekachi Wambu. I'm a Nigerian from the country in which um, the ancient kingdom of Benin was formerly located and from which these wonderful bronzes were looted from in 1897. I'm, I'm welcoming this disobedient tour because it's raising important issues of the past, uh, justice in the past, justice in the present and also justice in the future, not just in terms of um, artifacts, but also in terms of um, the climate as well. Also involved in a project called Return of the Icons, which specifically focus on the cultural artifacts and human remains that were taken from Africa during the period of empire, colonization, and slavery. And we are trying to get justice or see that campaign as, as part of a justice campaign to get all these artifacts returned. As a Nigerian, when I look at the Benin bronzes, what occurs to me is why are these items here? Why is it that Nigerians, uh, artists, Nigerian academics, young school children, who want to see part of their cultural patrimony have to come to London to, to get a sense of their past. Um, why is it that um, not only do they try to have to come to London to see that, but also increasingly just getting a visa to come to London, we know with the hostile environment is really, really difficult. So they're really important ethical questions that are being raised by the continued presence of the um, artifacts here. Um, when you come in and you, you look at these artifacts, what strikes you immediately is that they are trophies. And it's the campaign for return of the icons is much wider because what we're looking at is also human remains. So, um, there are heads that are in African heads, there are in boxes and in different ins cultural institutions that were taken during the period of colonization and empire. And so there's a, a whole framework of injustice and also a whole framework of um, trophy taken um, that kind of exists that needs to be corrected. So we're, our campaign on the return of the icons is really trying to put those issues to the fore. There are important issues about how they are preserved, um, these wonderful works are, and then conversations and actions about how we return them. At the moment, these items, the muse British Museum say that they can't return them because there's a law in place that pre prevents them breaking up the national collections. So that applies to British Museum, the British Library, uh, the v &A, some of these big national institutions. Um, they're not allowed to break up their collections as an act of parliament. Although we, we know that in the last 20 years, there have been um, a precedent set and the law has been changed to return looted Nazi artifacts. So it's not beyond the bounds of creativity to make, to also, create conditions for the return of African artifacts. Um, these wonderful treasures were, as I said, taken as part of um, a um, punitive ex expedition, which um, was launched during colonization to basically subdue the um, city of Benin and the old kingdom of Benin and the artifacts were taken in response to, after this subjugation to pay for the punitive expedition. Also, we are told by the information that is provided on the side there um, by the British Museum. What the information doesn't tell you about was the degree of the violence that was unleashed in Benin. Um, over tens of thousands died, according to then 
historians who have studied the period, Dan Hicks, who a anthropologist and author who wrote a, a brilliant book called The Brutish, the Brutish Museums um, that focus on the collections of, um, that are in the British Museum and other museums on the Benin collections, you know, estimates that um, tens of thousands were killed and crimes against humanity were committed um, when Benin itself was sacked. So we're looking at um, a terrible, terrible period in, colonial, um, in the colonial experience. And when people come in on a Saturday, on a Sunday with families to look at these objects, it is, um, you know, they don't, some, they're not really told this backstory. So they look at them as pieces of beauty, but not really understanding um, some of the pain that Africans and people from Benin feel when they come in to, to look at this material. And it, it, it is not really explained in terms of that context. Um, so the work that we're doing is really trying to raise awareness of all those issues, but also to ensure that these items go back to where they belong. As a Nigerian, I became aware of these items in 1997 um, during the period of the first African, um, sorry, the second black um, arts festival that the Nigerian government was hosting. It was a very, very big festival looking at the global African and black world and everybody came to Lagos and the symbol for the festival called Festac in 77 was one of the items that were taken from Benin which was an, an ivory mask of a queen mother from the 16th century. And the Nigerians asked the UK whether they could loan them that symbol of what was then in the post-independence period, the first big African um, sort of um, creative festival, um, reuniting the African world after period of disruption that uh, um, during that period of slavery and colonization and the British government and the museum refused the request which was a huge humiliating experience and that was when I first became aware in a way that these objects were being held hostage in London and the UK. So um, and since 77, as a young person, I've been concerned about the continued presence here uh, and have been trying over the years to raise awareness of them. Um, in the 1990s, I was nearly fortunate enough to make a documentary about the sacking of Benin. In the end, it didn't happen with the BBC, but it's been a really passionate um, interest in making sure that these uh, items are returned back. And what we're trying to do is also, beyond Benin, there were other really famous um, expeditions, um, punitive expeditions, where again, a lot of violence was unleashed against communities. There was the Ashanti expedition, where a lot of Ashanti treasures were taken, and some of those are now in the v &A. There were There was also the Magdala Exp uh, punitive expedition in Ethiopia, where again a number of really important objects, some of them religious objects, were taken. And then obviously there's the whole um, uh, Egyptian collection that is also upstairs here in the British Museum. So all of those are part of a, a restitution. Um, remembrance, recognition of what happened campaign that we're beginning to talk about. And we're talking about this now as looking at 10 hours where we ask for what happened to be recognized. And then we ask for remembrance for the victims. And then we ask for restitution for um, of the objects that were taken and the human remains, as well as um, reparations um, some people are asking for that in terms of the campaigns. But what we're seeing is a big focus 
um, and an accounting that is beginning to happen about this period of slavery, colonization and empire. And we, we saw that last year with the Black Lives Matters and the, the ways that people are now looking at the statues and those who benefited and why have there been so little focus on the victims. So we really welcome this disobedient tour and our partnership with those who are also drawing uh, attention to what's going on with the cli climate and we're saying that it's really important also to look for justice in terms of the past um, for the victims um, and also for those who have been dispossessed of their culture, of their artifacts and of their human remains. So we're seeing this partnership and this collaboration as part of a wider um, examination of the past um, so that we can create better futures for all of us.